and education. For a while you believe by putting just one phrase on paper or a slash of paint on a canvas, a gesture random and accidental, that you were on your way to the beginning of an order. Outwardly, there was little in his early life to suggest that Stephen Dunn would become one of America's great poets, a Pulitzer Prize winner, and a much-loved teacher, but that's what happened. Uh, and, and this is the New York native attended Hofstra University on a basketball scholarship, was the first in his family to graduate from college, and played pro ball for a year. Then, he became an advertising man. My case is so much different than anybody else's. I didn't have any teachers that taught me poetry in any successful way. I had no devotion to anything except playing ball. But I was a serious reader. I had read all the great books by the time I was 20, it seemed. Uh, my first job after college, after I played a year of basketball, was with National Biscuit Company in which I answered an ad in the New York Times for a writer. And I was good at it, I kept on getting promoted, it terrified me. So, Stephen quit the corporate world and went to Spain for a year. Went to write a novel, and wrote a bad novel, threw it away. And my only literary friend, Sam Toporoff, came over to Spain to visit, and he conferred that the poetry I was writing, that I started to write then, was good. If he hadn't done that, I might not have continued. The Professor Emeritus at Stockton University is the author of more than a dozen volumes of poetry, and his poems appear in magazines like The New Yorker. The poet married writer and essayist Barbara Hurd in 2003 and moved from New Jersey to Frostburg, Maryland, where she was teaching. I had taught his work for years and admired his work and that contrarian mind that he has. After I asked about their souls, they laughed and stumbled toward an answer, then gave up, turned the question back to me. Because mine was always in jeopardy, I said it went to the movies and hasn't been seen since. <laughs> for more than 20 years, Stephen Dunn has led seminars at the annual Murphy Writing Retreat, now held at the Stockton Seaview Hotel. For him, it feels like a community of people that have been on this poetry ride with him for a long time. He loves teaching. What he says in our class when we teach uh, at Stockton is uh, it's hard to write a good poem. I'm not sure any of you are going to write a good poem. And by the end of the semester, it's like, you know, some of you wrote some good poems. Uh, Ona has a difficult time writing a bad poem. Uh, uh, and and this, is, this is a good poem. But one, one of the things that makes it for me is, is the cooperative sounds, your N's and your M's. And his poems are accessible. Uh, you can read a Stephen Dunn poem and get it. Uh, I'm often called an honest poet. I never think of myself that way. I think honesty is an achievement if you're lucky. Stephen loves to play with contraries, so that uh, he might have a poem about a relationship, uh, let's say, between a husband and wife, and um, you're expecting it to go one way, but it turns in a different way. At home in Frostburg, Stephen Dunn chose to read a poem called Propositions, from his recent collection, Whereas. It includes the line, Before I asked my wife to marry me, I told her I'd never be fully honest. And it concludes with a line that he says completely surprised him when he wrote it. It was a poem that came out of a conversation, actually, that we did have at some point. And it was related to this conversation of honesty being an achievement and not, not something you just blurt out because it's what you're thinking at the time, that that's not necessarily honest at all. But, you know, to be digging deeper for what is really honest. Propositions. What does a pig know about bacon? Anyone who begins a sentence with, in all honesty, is about to tell a lie. Anyone who says, this is how I feel, had better love form more than disclosure. Same for anyone who thinks he thinks well, because he had a thought. If you say you're ugly to an ugly person, no credit for honesty. 
which must always be a discovery, an act that qualifies as an achievement. If you persist, you're just a cruel bastard, a pig without a mirror, somebody who hasn't examined himself enough. A hesitation hints at an attempt to be honest, suggests that difficulty is present. A good sentence needs a clause or two, interruptions set off by commas, evidence of a slowing down, a rethinking. Before I asked my wife to marry me, I told her I'd never be fully honest. No one, she said, had ever said that to her. I was trying to be radically honest, I said, but in fact had another motive. A claim without a but in it is at best only half true. In all honesty, I was asking in advance to be forgiven. Mm-hmm. <laughs>